Right now we're asking your help. To see if anyone recognizes 21-year-old Elisa Lamb. Her worried parents flew in from Vancouver, British Columbia, and stood behind LAPD detectives who described Lamb's disappearance as suspicious and may suggest foul play. She was in regular contact with her parents and uh, up until five days ago, five, six days ago. The last people to see her were the uh, staff at the hotel and, uh, and that's it. of a Canadian woman who was missing in L.A. has now been found. Elisa Lamb disappeared three weeks ago. Yesterday, her body was found inside a water tank on top of the hotel where she had been staying. tools to be able to cut the sides of the tank, remove the metal so they could as carefully remove the body for the coroner's office to conduct uh, their investigation. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? Welcome to Burnaby, British Columbia, just outside of Vancouver. I was here in December of 2020. I spent about a month here. Filmed countless videos. And on my list was visiting the grave site of Elisa Lamb. And unfortunately, by the time I started driving uh, east to go to my next uh, province, which is Alberta, I realized I had forgotten to do Elisa Lamb. She was at the top of my list, but sometimes I just get caught up in other videos, and I'm back here, and I'm finally able to visit uh, Elise's grave, and this is a very important video for me to make, because I've been wanting to make it for over two years. So, I'm going to say, we're going to go look at her grave first, and then I have a friend with me, we're going to talk about Elisa and the different theories about what happened to her. Now, if you don't know who Elisa Lam is, She's a young woman who's from British Columbia. She traveled to California by herself. She was in San Diego first, then went to Los Angeles and checked into the infamous Cecil Hotel. There, she disappeared. She was reported missing by her family on January 31st of 2013. And then on February 19th of 2013, her body was found in the water tower above the Cecil Hotel. There are so many theories about what happened to her, how she got in that watch tower, what happened to Elisa Lamb. And it's a story that's captivated millions of people. I'm gonna tell you right now, I have done a ton of research into the story. I've never watched, I don't watch any other documentaries on a subject I'm going to do. I do all my research by reading. So I don't know what other people possibly have uncovered. Like I know there was a Netflix series about the Cecil Hotel or about Elisa. And some people refer to her as Eliza. I've heard Elisa more. So I'm just going to talk about what I think happened to her. And as always, pay tribute to the, to the victim because we forget sometimes that she was an actual living, breathing person, just like you and I, with hopes, dreams. And I, I, when it comes to a sensational true crime, there's, you know, people forget sometimes, I think, that we're dealing with. A real human being and and a very sad and tragic ending so i'm going to try to do it with the most respect i can 
That's usually how I treat, uh, or is how I treat any victim I visit, or any grave I go to. And she's buried right over here. There's a nice Salman Rushdie quote on her grave. And uh, I'm going to show you it right now. Elisa was born on April 30th, 1991. Her family immigrated to Canada where they opened a restaurant here in Burnaby, British Columbia. Elisa was a student at University Hills Secondary and then the University of British Columbia. So, it's a beautiful picture of Elisa right there. Elisa Lamb, 1991 to 2013. I'm going to read you what it says here. As I said, it's a quote from Salman Rushdie, the author. Our lives disconnect and reconnect. We move on. And later we may again touch one another, again bounce away. This is a, the felt shape of a human life. Neither simply linear nor wholly disjunct, disjunctive nor endlessly bifurcating, but rather this bouncy castle sequence of bumpings into and tumblings apart. Salman Rushdie. And you can see... It's pretty clean, and that's because my friend who was with me just cleaned it off just before we began. It's very nice. And I brought a rock to leave for Elisa right here. Right there. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what, ha what the facts are so far. On January 26, 2013, Lamb checked into the Cecil Hotel, also known as Stay on Main, which is located in downtown Los Angeles near Skid Row. Early in her stay, she was relocated from a shared room to a private room due to odd behavior. She was last seen in the hotel on January 31st. Her parents, who'd been in daily contact with her, quickly reported her missing. Her belongings, including a wallet, ID, and laptop, had been left in her room. An LAPD bulletin about Lamb's disappearance mentioned that she spoke English and Cantonese, used public transportation, possibly had mild depression, and was ultimately headed to Santa Cruz, California. The police issued an appeal for assistance from the public and released a video that showed Lamb wearing a red hoodie inside an elevator at the hotel. In the footage, she presses numerous buttons, looks out of the elevator, moves back into a corner, steps outside the elevator, waves her hands about. The video went viral and sparked widespread interest in and speculation about the case. One theory arose that Lam was playing what is sometimes called the Korean elevator game, in which pressing elevator buttons in a specific pattern will supposedly open a portal to another dimension. While Elisa was still missing, guests at the hotel began to complain about low water pressure. On February 19th, 2013, a maintenance worker peered into one of the four four-foot by eight-foot water tanks on the roof of the hotel and spotted a dead body that turned out to be Elisa. The worker later said in court documents, I noticed the hatch to the main water tank was open and looked inside and saw an Asian woman lying face up in the water, approximately 12 inches from the top of the tank. The roof had previously been searched with the assistance of a police dog. However, no one had checked inside the water tanks. The investigation into Lamb's death continued following the discovery of her body. Entry to the roof was supposed to be restricted to hotel employees. An interior staircase to the roof had a locked door equipped with an alarm said to be working that should have alerted staff if it had been opened. Three fire escapes also provided access to the roof. Following further inquiry, an autopsy and toxicology tests, the coroner issued a ruling that Lamb had accidentally drowned. There were no indications of physical trauma on her body and no drugs that might have contributed to her death were found in her system. The coroner's report mentioned Lamb's bipolar disorder as a significant condition that played a role in her death. The lead investigator from the case gave a deposition. My opinion is that she fell off her medication and in her state, she happened to find a way onto the roof, got into the tank of water. Another detective noted, my partner and I tried to figure out how somebody could have put her in there and it's difficult for someone to have been able to do that and not leave prints, not leave DNA or anything like that. So she climbed in on her own. The case may be closed, but a reconstruction of how Lamb died reveals some confounding circumstances. For Lamb to have entered the water tank on her own, she would have needed to make her way to the hotel roof undetected, either through a locked and alarm door or via a fire escape in the side of the building. Now about that alarm door, I think my, personally, I think possibly a staff member accidentally left it unlocked 
and they never admitted to it because they did not want to be charged with any negligence. But next, she would have clambered onto the water tank platform and climbed a 10-foot ladder on the side of the tank. She then would have had to open a heavy water tank lid before getting inside. And at some point, Lamb, presumably undressed when she was located, her body was naked, while her clothes were in the tank with her. The Cecil Hotel, which had rebranded itself as Stay on Main prior to Lamb's stay, has a macabre history that may have contributed to speculation about Lamb's death. The the hotel had been the scene of multiple murders and suicides, dating nearly as far back as its first days of operation in 1927. In the 1980s, serial killer Richard Ramirez, known as the Night Stalker, stayed at the hotel. Jack Unterweger, an Austrian serial killer, was a guest in 1991. So, here we are at the grave, right here. I believe this is called the Dale section. It was very difficult to find. She's not, she's on finding grave, but there's no pin. So I asked at the office, they were very helpful. And now I'm gonna bring in a friend of mine that's with me today. This is Heather. Hi everyone. Heather and I have known each other, I think our entire lives almost, right? My entire life. Your entire life. I've known you since you were a baby. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Probably I was five or six and you were two or three because your brother and I were close friends and you were part of the package. Yeah. You were part of the package, you were part of the deal. So I had an old friend of mine, one of my closest friends. She lives here in uh, British Columbia and we're having a day out and we want to stop here. And she knows a lot about the case as well. So let's get the camera not too close to my face. I have my beliefs about what happened and I said to Heather, let's talk about the case when we get in the car a little bit but mostly we're gonna everything we talk about is just right now between us and you but we have very different opinions on what happened to elisa lamb don't i i was shocked when i heard what you had to say now what i believe and heather's gonna talk in a moment don't worry um i believe it's a simple case of a young girl who was uh had bipolar disorder and she was off her meds she had a history of seeing hallucinations and she climbed up the water tower got in for whatever reason that reason we'll never know and maybe was near the water tower the water was high in the water tower and possibly swimming around but then as people in the building used the water like for drinking water baths showers the level went down, she could no longer get out. There's, you know, she's going lower, and that rim, which she could climb out of, is far too high. I think it's, I think it's as simple as that, and that's what the police have surmised. I believe that's their official ruling. But there's so many other opinions that she was murdered, that um, she, well, Heather, what it do you think? It was ghosts. It was ghosts. It was ghosts. So you think, so the famous elevator footage of her looking out, looking in, pressing the buttons. You Talking thi- to somebody that wasn't there, that right. was a ghost. Right. So you, and you honestly do believe that? I believe that there's supernatural things afoot. Right. Now, I mean, people watch my channel, they know I'm, a, I'm quite a skeptic when it comes to things like that, but I'm not going to discount anyone's opinion. I'm kind of not on that side. But what makes you, what makes you think that? Well, I think the fact that she had no drugs in her system is interesting. The fact that, she, yes, she's bipolar, but she's not schizophrenic. And to my knowledge, bipolar, even in a manic episode, I am not a doctor, mm-hmm. don't necessarily have that type of delusions. Plus, all of the history of the Cecil Hotel right. stands by ghosts. Plus, wasn't the door to the water tower locked? I don't know. There's a lot of... Right. I mean, she was... Now, there were no drugs in her system, but she was off her meds, right? She took a fair amount of drugs for her disorder. So that would explain why there's no drugs in her system. What I also found interesting was... We'll get back to your point. But you have a friend who's a... A a doctor of psychology. Right here in Vancouver, right? Yes. And you just talked to him when I was with you. Yes. And he said that there is a form of bipolar disorder, which is... What is something called? It's schizophrenia bipolar, which it's, she wasn't diagnosed with, but the, it's a form of bi, right? Yes. So maybe that one night, her bipolar, I 
got more severe. Severe, yeah. Right. Maybe, or maybe there was something supernatural at play. Yeah, I mean, I've been to the Cecil. I've been, I've been when it was open, and that was 2012 and 2014. It was called Stay on Main. I've been in the lobby and um, in a little city room off, and it was very normal. It was. I, I didn't. I, we. At that, I don't remember even at the time if it was 2012. So the first time I went there, yes, it was before Elisa Lambert was in. And because the building beside it, you two uh, did the video for where the streets have no name on the roof beside it. So that was why my friend and I were in that area yeah. to do that. And we thought, oh, why, why not go into the Cesar Hotel, which is seen in the video? We didn't really know any of the history behind it. Now, when it comes to that, like Richard Ramirez stayed there. I've done a video on it, uh, the Cesar Hotel and the YouTube video. I'll put the link below. Um, in the description, I thought, like, well, just because a serial killer stayed there and a woman did throw her baby off of the balcony, which is horrifying, um, a, a long time ago. Well, and now this. And now this. I mean, but how many more things do you need? I think you need. I th I think, well, because I've been in the Cecil, and now when you go down to the Cecil Hotel area, it is rough. Yeah. The area around it is is rough, and the people. Uh, I think it's closed right now, but in the past few years, the people that checked in, there, I would see, it's not, you know, I'm not sure why she chose that hotel, and I know she was staying, they, they assigned her a room with roommates, but then she kicked them out, or she, they, they had her leave or something, but she was leaving them notes saying get out to her roommates, and writing stuff like, um, and Do she... Do we know she, for sure it was her? Maybe that was also... Well, uh, she made, I, she made them have a password to get in the room. So she was suffering. She was she was going through something. Yes. Well, that's for sure. I mean, so I think that vi the video, you know, the famous elevator, the elevator video. Elevator video. I just think she's someone who is mentally ill and off their meds, and then she managed to somehow get into the water tower. Now, why was she? And if somebody, do you, do you think somebody maybe killed her and put her there? Do you think that's a possibility? I think that. Sometimes ghosts come in the form of delusions, and maybe both things are true. Maybe she was off her meds, but that allowed her to connect to wow. the paranormal universe. Or right. Ghost. And then that's what happened. And our reason and our excuse for paranormal activity is, you know, mental health issues. Right. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me because I, I mean, we've known each other, like I said, all our lives. And... I'm such a skeptic, and there are people who watch my channel rarely know that I, I don't believe in ghosts or the paranormal, but I don't thoroughly discount it because I don't, I'm, yeah. I don't know, but I just, I'm, you know, I go by science and I'm like, well, well yeah. it's not proven. So, but, so it's interesting to be with somebody who actually really believes that. And my sister believes it. I've talked to a few people about this case. So a lot of people do believe it's something paranormal now, but there is that other side that she was simply, not simply, but sadly murdered by somebody put in the water tower seems hard when, i don't believe the murder thing it seems hard to, to carry a body up the ladder into yeah. the water to, and I and there was and no one knows that there was no dna found of anybody else Does she have enemies at all yeah that we know of and she was so young yeah she was yeah how i mean so what she, she was nine and seven, 22 years old roughly so i mean yeah that's i don't know it's crazy yeah, but so many people focus on the Cecil Hotel as this, you know, I mean, well, it is dangerous, but so many people focus on the fact of the serial killer uh, thing, and that it's, it's a hub for paranormal activity. To me, it's just a dilapidated old hotel in a really sketchy part of Los Angeles, and it's an easy, it's easy to look at and go, Richard Muir stayed there, the Night Stalker, a woman did this to her baby there haunted yeah but it's easy to say that but those things would have had to happen there in order to say that right so yeah but but that, we would already need the unusual activity to be present in order to claim that it's a haunted in some way I don't and know, i would think haunted houses would be the same right thing. would you st would you stay in the cecil no Wait, okay what if you what what if you were if it was in a nice area 
nicer area. Right, because like, I, yeah, I would yeah, because feel it, unsafe. That's it, why you I would, I would feel, I would feel unsafe staying there only because of the area and because it's, it's, I don't know what the management would be like. You know, it's closed now; it's not open. If it was like in the middle of, I don't know, like the Banff Springs Hotel, but haunted. Yeah. A hundred percent. So you'd stay in a haunted hotel if it was. Yes. In a, yeah, me too. I would have no problem. I'd stay yes. overnight. I would. I've said to people, I would sleep overnight in a cemetery if I could on a video just to do it because I, I'm not afraid of cemeteries, but people. No, a lot of people I think are. The spirits are friends. Hope Just so. because I believe in them doesn't mean that I don't. You know, I think they're scary. I don't think right. they're scary. Right. Although so in this instance, it's a little. So you think you think there is paranormal activity involved with her death? Yes. But you're also open to the idea that maybe it was just a tragic accident. I think it's the chances are heavily weighted that you're more right than I am, but I still want to think that it's a ghost story. Now, I wasn't trying to get you to say that I was more right, but maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe I was trying to lead you to that side. In a of law, I feel like you might be it just, victorious I'm only, on a debate stage, but well, you, like I, said, I think I'm right. You know me. I've always been the more logical, <laughs> not more logical. I deal with more, I'm just always like the simplest answer, the easiest answer. That's usually the correct answer, but nobody, no, a lot of people don't want to ever believe that. Like when it comes to celebrity death. I've done so many videos and nobody wants to believe a celebrity died the way they did. There's always conspiracy theories. And when somebody becomes famous after well, death in, in a true crime. Video. The elevator video is pretty it's really crazy. Compelling. It's very compelling. It's it's a silent video and it's I mean you can watch that I mean, there's over and over. There's somebody there in her mind. In her mind. Right. But was so whether that's a real somebody or not real somebody, but she's right. definitely talking to somebody. Yeah. Uh, reacting to somebody. And it's sad. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in uh, already. No, I don't think I did. Like, I mean, the way she was found was because people started complaining about the water. They were drinking it, and it was coming out like off color. So people started complaining about the water. So a maintenance worker went up into the water tower and found her body, and that's that's. Brutal for everybody involved, for Elisa, for the people in the hotel at the time, and for the maintenance worker to find out. Everybody. That's just, oh man. And then for her family to find out that's the way she uh, passed away. I mean, they, they were fran they flew to Los Angeles looking for her. They were frantic. So we forget, right? We were talking about this on drive. We forget that these people that we, oh, I, I do stories on and other people do, they're a real person. Yeah. You know, it's she's not the girl. I'm probably going to call this video something like the girl from the CISA hotel so people know who I'm talking about but I mean she's not just the girl from the water town the girl she had hopes dreams aspirations like all yeah, of us she's somebody's daughter she's somebody <laughs> like, she's, she's somebody's daughter right and yeah well she's in a beautiful resting place I'll say that much right we, we drove around for a while looking before we had to before we had to ask and we were saying like it's one of the more beautiful cemeteries I mean these views that's that's Burnaby that way, and that's Vancouver that way, correct? You're from here. Yes. I believe so. That's those are the North Shore Mountains. Okay, so that's Vancouver that way, and that's Burnaby that way. Beautiful. I've only been here twice before, and both times were winter. It's completely different. Yeah. Like, I mean, with the, with the sun. Yeah, it's gray, dreary. This is a beautiful day. All right, Heather. Boom. Boom. Thanks for everybody watching. Um, write in the Thanks, comments Heather. below what you think. Um, Team Don't. Heather. <laughs> team, team Scott. <laughs> and be nice because this we're talking about a real person. So be nice in the comments about about Elisa and what you think happened to her. I know you will be. I love you all. Heather, thank you. Thank you. Peace. Out. This is wild. We were just just finished the video, but this was behind us the whole time. I normally don't, don't film other people's graves, but I thought you'd like to see if you saw it in the background. I love this grave. That's yeah, beautiful. It's a whole garden. Yeah. And there's artwork all in it. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And I felt like I should take that bottle of water away, but I also feel like it's there for a reason. Oh, you think there's something, there's a reason why the water bottle's there? Yeah. Right? It, every it doesn't make any sense. So there's, there's, no, there's no garbage anywhere. But yeah. And I want to say what, so yeah, I guess we should leave it because I don't know why it's there. It could be something, there could be water in there that's from a place that they wanted, that she loved.
a lake or something. Yeah, could be. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I want to point out this over here. We'll walk this way. Because on my Sage Stallone video that I did that I uh, put up just recently, I don't think a lot of people watched to the end because there was a f overturned flower um, pot that I never, that you don't see me on camera trying to fix. And here's one here that I'm going to be able to fix so I can see. On the Sage Stallone video, what I was trying to say when I put the text at the bottom was the bottom of it was so disintegrated and more and wet Every time I tried to place it, like it was deformed on one side, it would just keep toppling over. Like it didn't matter how many times I tried to place it, it just would started falling over. So I thought I would explain that in case, because I got a lot of questions. Why didn't you fix it? Why didn't you fix it? And, I'm, and that was why I couldn't, I wasn't able to. But anytime I see something like this, I'm gonna try to fix. And there we go. Fixed standing up it's not going to stay too long in the wind maybe but at least it's done all right peace out